Hello, everyone. Welcome to another International Relations Capsule for the Shankar Academy. Today, our topic is the former president, Parvez Musharraf, former president of Pakistan, who died recently in Dubai and was buried in Pakistan a few hours ago. We are discussing it because his whole legacy is being re-examined at this time. He has always been a controversial person in various ways in Pakistan itself. But today the controversy is not in Pakistan, but in India. In Pakistan, they decided to bring his body back from Dubai, though he was in exile, and buried him with military honors, but without the presence of the president prime minister or the chief of staff. So that chapter is closed. But in India, the discussion is whether he was a villain or a hero. This question is open because his period of tenure as the army chief, starting from 1999, and then as president from 2001. He was a very distinguished uh, military official. He was born in India before partition. And he was in Turkey as a young student and then joined the army in 1964 and rose in the hierarchy quite smartly and quite regularly. Till in 1999, uh, President Nawaz Sharif appointed him as the chief of army staff. On, the top of, on top of several others who were equally competent and uh, senior. And in 1999, he undertook an adventure against India without any provocation. Uh, it is not very clear who thought of the idea, but it was clear that the brain behind it was Nawaz Sharif, sorry, uh, Parvez Musharraf, who was the chief of the army staff. And Nawaz Sharif, who was prime minister, was probably unaware of it. But uh, Mushraf says in his book that it is a myth to think that he did it without taking the political leadership into confidence. That's all, he doesn't elaborate. So it is not very clear whether it was with the support of Nawaz Sharif that he undertook this exercise which was basically to find a new route to Kashmir across the line of control and try to capture Kargil, which is a very important post on the Indian side of the line of control. And uh, whether it was properly planned or not, it turned out to be a major war between India and Pakistan. And, uh, and finally, of course, uh, there are different claims as to who lost more lives, etc. We have done a lot of studies and we know that Indian soldiers were killed there. And uh, still we refrain from entering the LOC on the Pakistani side. We try to meet the threat from our part of the line of control. And therefore we got some kind of appreciation from many countries and particularly the United States which for the first time in the question of Kargil supported India because it was Pakistan which has, which has crossed the line of control and the United States has some commitment to the line of control and therefore they considered Pakistan's action aggression, at least um, irregular action or whatever. And therefore, uh, President Clinton summoned, as it were, called the Prime Minister Nawaz Sharif to Washington on a 4th July, which is a national day of the United States, and engaged him for the whole day. In fact, he was also keen to be in touch with uh, Prime Minister Vajpayee, but Prime Minister Vajpayee declined to go to Washington because we don't want this kind of uh, you know, mediation. But uh, President Clinton kept Prime Minister Vajpayee informed of the developments and what happened. 
And at the end of the day, he gave Nawaz Sharif an ultimatum that the Pakistani troops should withdraw behind to behind the line to Pakistani territory on their side of the line of control. And without much uh, trouble, Nawaz Sharif managed to get the army pulled back. Even though the army was not very happy with it, Mushraf himself was not so happy. But um, uh, this is this is what happened in Kargil. Kargil has been discussed in great detail. We have done a study as to what its implications were, etc. It was a major war between India and Pakistan. And there was no doubt that the man behind this adventure or misadventure was uh, Mushraf himself. Then uh, we know that uh, uh, on, uh, in October 1999, uh, Sharif dismissed Mushraf as army chief while he was traveling from a visit to Sri Lanka, coming back to Pakistan. And his plane was not allowed to land. And it was asked to move out of the Pakistani airspace urgently. This was the message that he received in the plane. And he didn't understand why it was so, but he managed to contact his generals on the ground and prepared a rather safe uh, landing for him. And he landed, and that was a big provocation that Nawaz Sharif had tried to uh, dismiss him or even, even kill him. And um, as a consequence of this particular incident, or at least as an excuse, uh, Mushraf took over. He staged a military coup. It was a bloodless coup because he didn't have to kill anybody. But uh, he arrested Nawaz Sharif and took over charge. Uh, for some time, he ruled as a... There was no martial law or anything. He was not worried about a backlash because the army was with him. And uh, then he suspended the constitution and went through several uh, steps. And 2001, he became the president of Pakistan. Uh, and he had a certain legitimacy because uh, it was uh, under the constitution that he assumed office. And then something very strange happened in that uh, Musharraf, for some reason or the other, uh, decided to stage a peace initiative with India. This is a bit mysterious because we do not know what prompted him uh, to suggest uh, various uh, proposals uh, to resolve the Kashmir issue and to become friendly with India. This is where the contradiction is because as a, a champion of Kargil and as someone who tried to uh, fight a war with India, suddenly becoming a uh, peace, proposing a peace initiative. And uh, we know that there was a meeting with uh, Prime Minister Vajpayee in Agra in 2001. And the two sides discussed various things, various possibilities of uh, peace between the two countries. This was preceded by, uh, you know, backdoor, backstage negotiations between some diplomats on both sides, and there were some proposals there also. So all this put together, he made a very major push to persuade Mr. Vajpayee to agree uh, to some kind of a, an agreement, a draft declaration was suggested. And they came to a point of agreeing on that. But the details are still not very clear. So the, the whole idea was to change the story as far as the uh, Kashmir issue is concerned to open up the issue because it is frozen in the context of India uh, claiming very strongly that it is an integral part of India and Pakistan has nothing to do with it. It was constitutionally legally part of India and therefore Pakistan had no real say in negotiation. There was no negotiating point as such. What he wanted to do was perhaps to open out this for further discussions because we agreed to discuss uh, Kashmir only in the context of terrorism, not in the context of its status. The status as well as we are concerned, Jammu and Kashmir is part of India and that's all. There's no further question on this. 
So he tried generally to get around to this uh, by opening up now some new proposals. And then he put forward the famous four point formula for Kashmir, which is totally went against all that had happened till then. It goes against the question of India's sovereignty over Jammu and Kashmir, etc. He wanted areas to be identified as areas which needed attention and then have some kind of a different administration. That is, Pakistanis, Indians, and Kashmir is jointly administering these territories, which is far away from the position of India, and also to keep the borders open. And all this was tried, but the last minute, India rejected it. Another effort was made by the president, and it was again rejected. And Musharraf was rather disappointed. And uh, later, of course, there were many developments in uh, Pakistan itself. So he uh, reinstated the constitution, held elections, became president. Then 2007, uh, he had a, a quarrel with the judiciary. And uh, in uh, 2008, his policy, his uh, party totally failed. And uh, he had a, a lot of uh, difficulties. And uh, he eventually resigned as president in 2008. So he again tried to become the president through a new political party, All Pakistan Muslim League. Uh, but in 2013, a Pakistani court, court disqualified him and he was arrested in 2013 on charges that he had a hand in the murder of Benazir Bhutto. And uh, so the Bhutto assassination, he was uh, considered a, a culprit. Uh, but, uh, and also he was sentenced to death for high treason by a court in Pakistan. And, uh, but he was allowed to leave the country because he was not safe. And so he has been living in uh, uh, Dubai uh, since then, he could not return to uh, Pakistan. And uh, there he was uh, very ill and uh, he passed away. Uh, it was not very clear whether his body would be brought back to Pakistan because he was uh, exiled in a sense and also he was a criminal. But um, Contrary to general expectation, he was allowed to be brought back. But uh, only army owners and the civilian government did not participate in it. And there ended the story of uh, uh, Musharraf. So he was controversial in many ways. So the way he became chief and he became president and he tried to manipulate the constitution and then finally had a, a face-off with the judiciary. He tried to damaged the judiciary, but uh, that was not possible, and eventually he was uh, exact. So that was the end of the story. But now the question arises as to what was the nature of his presidency. This is particularly uh, because uh, some of our political leaders, uh, you know, referred to him in some uh, glowing terms, as it were. They all recognized that it was a, he was a, an enemy of India. There was no question about it. Kargil was really his creation. And therefore, there is no way we can consider him to be a friend of India. But some people felt that uh, his efforts to make peace with India and Kashmir and the efforts in Agra uh, to bring up some new proposals made him a power for peace and therefore he could be considered uh, not a friend, but at least he was reasonable with India. But this is rather strange because uh, I do not think that there was any justification for us to think in terms of being friendly to India, except for that particular situation when he tried to bring about uh, some positive change in India-Pakistan relations. But if you look at the proposals that he put, put forward and tried to promote in Agra, hoping that uh, Prime Minister Vajpayee would agree, 
they were fraught with dangers. It was not at all in the interest of India to have changed the situation. And it was foolish of him to think that uh, this would be accepted by India. He expressed great disappointment. He put the blame on some of the Indian officials for sabotaging it, etc. And the only justification for such effort was the fact that uh, track two discussions between India and Pakistan officials had made some suggestions on the line that um, uh, he his proposals were put forward. So to think that he genuinely tried for peace in uh, Pakistan in uh, Kashmir, and therefore he could be considered a favorable figure in the history of Pakistan is a little uh, skewed and there seems to be no justification for it. Uh, he would continue to be a controversial character in the history of Pakistan and also he will, when we study all his activities and actions, he will certainly be considered inimical to India like all other uh, leaders and uh, army uh, chiefs in Pakistan. But there is a certain love-hate relationship between India and Pakistan because, uh, you know, we are the same people. Uh, we are adversarial in nature, but uh, in many ways, uh, we feel comfortable with Pakistani leaders and Pakistani diplomats, even when they are very adamant on their differences with India. But socially, uh, Indian diplomats and get on well with Pakistani diplomats abroad. Uh, because of the cultural linkages, music, and you know, general common history of the past, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So similarly, we also have the tendency to look at uh, Pakistani leaders with certain amount of consideration, because uh, the Pakistani leaders are generally very sophisticated, and they put on an air of friendliness and informal interaction, etc. General Zia was perhaps the most uh, hardened anti-Indian chief of army staff. But even he, if you read uh, writings by journalists or the so-called uh, peaceniks in India who want to negotiate peace with Pakistan, they always talk about him as a very charming, friendly, courteous man. He would walk up to the car when Indian politicians uh, visit him. And this kind of, uh, some kind of an artificial uh, Bonhomi was created by some of these generals in the past. And they are very, quite westernized. And in the army, of course, many of them have worked with our senior military officials and there is some amount of probability. But even Imran Khan, who was a great friend of India, million, millions of fans in India, he did not raise a little finger to change the situation. And therefore, on a personal network or on a personal uh, admiration for each other, such problems uh, cannot be solved. We have learned that. And that is why Prime Minister Narendra Modi, after he made all these efforts, soon after he became Prime Minister, inviting the South Asian leaders, speaking to the Pakistani uh, Prime Minister, and uh, sending gifts for his mother, and even uh, attending a wedding in the Nawaz Sharif family. All these were very warm gestures on the part of Prime Minister Modi. Uh, but after the Mumbai attack, things changed completely. And um, he went back to the original position that India held, uh, that uh, we shall have no negotiations with uh, Pakistan till Pakistan abandons terrorism as a state policy. This is the firm belief of the present Prime Minister and the government. Uh, the same position was held even during Dr. Manmohan Singh's time. But often on, talks were held formally and informally to see whether there is any possibility of resuming the negotiations. But now Prime Minister Modi has put a halt to all that and uh, he firmly holds the view that we will have nothing to do with terrorism and terrorists. That's a very firm position we have today. And that is why even though at the time of the pandemic, we called a meeting of SARC, it did not take off because Pakistanis insisted on discussing Kashmir when the meeting was called for uh, dealing with the pandemic. 
So there is no uh, a, a way of uh, considering all these uh, um, statements and positions taken by them in good faith. Not at all. No Pakistan leader has put forward any proposal. They made proposals like no war pact, South Asia has a nuclear weapon free zone. All these sound very reasonable to outsiders. But if you look at them, you will find that they were all uh, various tricks to somehow change the situation on the, on the Kashmir issue. So there is no question, not, no doubt that Sharif, sorry, uh, uh, Musharraf should be considered a hero in India. And um, that has been very, clear, very clearly mentioned uh, by, by those in the government as well as in the, in the opposition. So with his uh, contribution to India-Pakistan uh, peace is negligible. So he made a very sincere effort for no reason, maybe to serve his own purposes and not to resolve the issue or to give any concession to it. So that is what we need to remember when we make an assessment of his contribution. Uh, he was impressive in many ways. He was very stylish. He enjoyed a scotch, not in public. He had uh, dogs, you know, generally a tolerant Muslim. That is the image that he has projected. The fact that he was born in India was also, um, you know, highlighted. And uh, he wanted his birth certificate, which was given to him by the prime minister. So, so all these gestures and so on went, went on. Uh, but basically, having been the architect of Kargil and later trying to hoodwink India, hoodwink India into uh, new proposals on Kashmir, you would certainly judge him not as a friend of India, but as someone who was very clever and tried to do various things with his own people and also with India. And he met a tragic end, but mercifully he died in his bed. He had four assassination attempts against him by the, uh, by the terrorist groups inside Pakistan. And he survived all that and he was able to die in peace in Dubai. And he was buried in, uh, in Pakistan in spite of all this has happened. And we should be able to close that chapter with that kind of a judgment of a man. The reason our policy is not to negotiate unless they give up. They are inimical and uh, uh, definitely their agenda is to uh, destroy India. That is their agenda. Of course, they are very weak, too weak for that, but they have nuclear weapons and so on. So there's yes, no sir. question of any kind of peace with Pakistan unless they stop terrorism, which they are not willing to do. So on what basis okay. can we negotiate? As far as we are concerned, what we want is recognition of Jammu and Kashmir as an integral part of India, which they are not willing to do. So they're trying to do various things, some of which we ourselves have considered, and but none of them were as practical enough. And now, of course, you know that uh, the present government has also said that uh, any solution will mean also return of Pakistan-occupied Kashmir to India. And then Article 370, you know. So the situation has become very rigid, and I see no possibility of any uh, peace negotiations at this stage. Thank you very much.